Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today is a continuation of what I started in my last video which was a fantasy skin color tutorial and this one's just another variation of how I like to handle it. I also really wanted to do companion pieces. I love doing pieces that go together so that I can figure out different design elements that I can mirror but also have them unique and different. I know I talk about this all, pretty much every time that I do a companion piece but I find that it really opens up a lot of new challenges and things that I really enjoy in designing them. So typically when I'm creating companion pieces, I really plan out the two color comps together at the same time so I can have very slight hints of the colors from one into the other and ways that I can tie them together so that they look like companion pieces. That's one of the things that I love the most about doing it is finding small hints that tie them together. But for this one, I ended up doing the first one, Maritime, entirely first, and then I did this one. So this one is the one that's following behind with the other one. I was making decisions in my green skin man to hint at with the first one rather than working in tandem a little bit, which I liked. It gave me a little bit of a refreshment on how I typically attack this kind of a concept. One of the ways that I helped tie the two together is I used a, it was Basically a turquoise, but not quite. It was a little bit more on the blue side, but I used that paint in some of the lighter areas of shadow on that first piece. And for this one, I used it for the deeper shadows since he's mostly green. I wanted to have that be the depth of the shadows here. But by using that same paint, it does really instantly help tie things together. That's actually a really easy way to do that is to address your shadows in a similar way and use the same paints in different areas of both pieces. That way you can get where they immediately have that tied together. And a little bit of non-art related news is I'm actually right in the middle of moving. Even as I'm recording this, I have pretty much everything boxed up, but it reminded me how much breaking up the routine really helps reinvigorate my creative thought processes. I actually really love moving. I've moved quite a bit in my lifetime and every time I do, it always feels like this spark of a new adventure and it's an amazing moment where I get to rethink how do I have my art desk when I'm younger or how am I going to have my studio now? How can I change things so that it makes everything better? And that is just this chain reaction of getting me more and more motivated to create more artwork. And I have been wanting to find a way to to hold on to that feeling so that I can have that even when I'm not moving, to have that spark of newness in the way that I'm approaching things and this adventure and this new excitement that comes with it. And I think for me personally, I get a lot of energy from being in different places and moving around, even if it means not moving an apartment, but say getting out and going to the park and sketching there. So I think that that's something that I'd really like to focus on more. In the summer, it's going to be a lot easier, but also when it becomes winter, I would really like to take myself to to even the library just to sketch because that I think is something that's key to how I feel better about what I'm thinking about and how I'm drawing. And when I get cooped up in my own studio and my own apartment for for days on end, it really kind of saps that energy. So this is a good time for me to be really thoughtful about what makes me feel more creative, what things are really detrimental for that. And again, that's something that I really need to work on all the time is be a little bit more aware of what things work for me and what things don't. But I think one thing that might have immediately helped these is if I had gone in with a darker line work for them and treated them a little bit more like how a tattoo would be executed, but also the fact that the line work that I did use and I ended up going forward with is really washed out with the wash that I put inside of it. So the tattoo gets a little bit more hard to differentiate what's actually happening. So that's um, a hard thing that I've, I'm trying to figure out a little bit more of is dealing with the colored line work, how, how dark can I go with the line work before the line work pretty much disappears? And that's something I struggle with a little bit. And this one, I, I didn't really utilize in the best way possible, I think, but, but that actually is a pretty easy fix because I can just go back in and as annoying as it is, I could reline it if I want it or reline even specific parts of it. But overall, I'm pretty okay with it. It's just a little bit more subtle than I would have preferred, but I 
really loved when I finally got to use this gold paint. This was actually my favorite part. I had put in some white highlights in this hair originally, but they were just really stark and not really well done. But I decided to go over them with the gold paint and I really love that. They connected with the color scheme of his hair a lot better since his hair is green and the gold is yellow. It has that hint where it almost seems a little bit more correct than the white. And it just really popped and I loved how it shimmered. So I, <laughs> I probably put a little bit too much of this gold throughout this piece, if that's possible. It is possible because I do it all the time. But I, I really loved that in particular of putting it in his hair. That's something that I haven't really done yet. I tend to use it as more of an embellishment, but I haven't really pushed using gold paint for, for an actual highlight on a piece, if that makes sense. And that is about it for today. I do have a link down in the description that will take you to the art shop where this original painting is listed. I do also have my maritime from the last video that's still available as well. And this Friday is when I will be releasing my next video, which is actually a YouTube artist collective piece. And the theme is world in a bottle. If you'd like to see some of the behind the scenes stuff like thumbnails and sketches, I have those posted on my Patreon. There's a link down in the description as well. That is it for today. So I will see you next time on Friday. I'll see you then.